Hola, comadres. Welcome to the third episode of Comadreando. I'm your host, Marcy. And today we're joined by my amazing guest. His name is Kevin. Kevin uh, Wilson, and I'm going to let him Father to an autistic 14-year-old daughter named Kyla. Uh, I work on film sets. Okay. What do you do for a living, Kevin? Awesome. All right, comadres. So today the topic is dating as a parent of a child with special needs. But before we get into the meat and potatoes, yes. uh, Kevin, you said your daughter has autism. I wanted to ask, when did you or your okay, so daughter's mother at, notice at, when my daughter was uh, born, I was that your child was different? She, my daughter's mother started to realize something was like up with her around, I want to say like it, I, I think they call it the birth to three program, but I want to say around like maybe birth to three, a anywhere, in, somewhere in between there. I want to say maybe six months into it, maybe eight months into it or a year or something. I can't pinpoint it. So the so the early Head Start program that your, your, your child's mother was part of with your daughter, um, was she closer to like finishing the program when she got diagnosed? Like yeah, she was she older, was walking, walking, talking, she was, she was or like supposed to be walking, walking and talking. learning how to walk. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure she was already saying she was already saying a few words. Okay. But things kind of things kind of uh, changed up. Mm hmm. Yeah. So they regressed. Okay, that's um, that's pretty typical. Um, for girls, for boys, usually mm -hmm. they diagnose anywhere from 12 mm -hmm. to 18 months. Um, for girls, it takes a little bit longer. Um, I don't know precisely the reason why. For the most part, uh, it's like later on. So for girls, so based on um, studies and research, mm -hmm. it's from two to four years old that um, they're diagnosed. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. now to the topic at hand. Uh, what yeah, I, has it been like dating as a parent yeah. of a child? Well, as a single parent, one. Okay, so and I have a, like, moreover, I have a, as a parent really, of like, a child with special needs. Uh, perspective in this because my daughter lives in another state. So I feel like I like I get away with a lot more like being able to date and not have not have to schedule a babysitter, which can't just be any regular babysitter. So I'm pretty sure um, my daughter's mother probably will be way more capable to answer that like in details. But I can say that as in me dating and being in another state, like I take a lot of things into consideration when I'm dating somebody. Like if if, if this is going to be something that I don't like, it's just like a, a regular date and I don't know if it's going somewhere. I'm not even, I'll mention my daughter and I'll talk about my daughter and show my daughter, but um if it's not getting serious i'm not i'm not gonna bring my daughter around i just don't feel the need to i understand that so so when you're when you're in the talking stage before you go on the date with the person do you like you mentioned you have a daughter obviously um are there any questions you ask to field whether or not this person might be or have the potential um, to be someone exact, you might be with long term. I kind of like in conversation, uh, usually with me, like uh, um, different things pop up and it's kind of like I not red flag it, but I um, like if I'm on a date with a female and she and she says something disturbing about autistic kids before I even get to say uh, something, I'll like you know, okay, well, I know I won't be with this young lady um, too long. It, it really just, things just come up in conversation. Things like um, if they have kids, how they parent their kids. Um, because I feel like my, my, obviously my daughter is special. She does need special attention. It's not, if you can't, I don't even, I don't know if I should say a regular child. If you can't handle a child that is not autistic, you won't, I don't know if you'll be able to handle a child that is autistic. And my baby is, my baby is very precious. That it doesn't, it doesn't matter I how cute you are or how much money you have. 
like my daughter is very precious to me. So if you have like a a nasty attitude or just uh, don't want kids or something like that, I can't. It doesn't matter how beautiful you are. It's like I have to I have to go the other way. Maybe it could be a short term thing, but it won't be something long. It wouldn't be something long lasting where I would be feel comfortable bringing my daughter around. Okay. Uh, but mm-hmm. when your daughter is around, like when she comes from out of state to stay with mm-hmm. you, how do you, I like, if it's serious? Absolutely. Absolutely. Do you to introduce serious. that person to if your daughter? I believe daughter? there's a chance of it actually going somewhere. Yes, because we're a package. Okay. It's no, it's no just me. Um, in the sense that my daughter is, um, my daughter is something that I don't want to say deal with, but I, I, I don't, it's not a situation where when, I feel as though my daughter turns 18 and that's it. She's going to get her house and that's it. But I, I still walk with my daughter to the bathroom when she's 14. My, her, her mother doesn't, but it's just, I'm not around her 24 seven. So I don't like, I still have that like Papa bear. I have to follow you everywhere just in case something happens type thing. Okay. Um, so talking, going back to that, that, the comment you made about, you know, how you determine whether this person is worthy mm-hmm. of meeting your princess or your treasure. Um, are there, is there anything that you would consider a red flag? Like besides the parenting personality, thing? Um, most of the things that would be considered a red flag if I didn't have mm-hmm. a child with autism. Yeah. Patient, like, um, a child. I would look for all the good things, but it's like, it's almost like I have to like put a microscope on it even more because of my daughter. Do you ask them if they've worked ha, before you, let's say before you talk about your daughter having special needs or having autism, do you like bring it up in conversation? Have they ever, you know, dealt with a person with autism or yeah, once to them, we start, or is there anybody one, in the family I, I that start, has autism? Like, once there's an interest and we start talking, um, usually it comes up and I usually like bring it up almost, I want to say almost immediately, especially if I like, I'm very attracted to the female or whatever, because I kind of like, like to get stuff like that out of the way, because if it's not something that they're even, I don't even, I don't know how to say comfortable. I don't, if if it's not something that they're willing to deal with, then they're not willing to deal with me because like I said, it's a, it's a, it's a package. And mostly I, I, I don't think I bumped into anybody that said, oh, I can't do an autistic child or something like I can't be around an autistic child. I don't think I've ever been around somebody who's like blatantly said, you know, oh, you have an autistic child. I don't want to speak to you. I haven't got that. Mm. Well, I mean, for me, because, you know, I'm single also. Uh, my dating, I usually do, like, a couple of things to field the person. Um, I usually ask that, like, if they've ever dealt with a person with autism. And um, I also see how they refer to people mm-hmm, with special mm-hmm. needs. Yes, exactly. Like, if they use words like the R word. Yeah, yeah. yeah that yeah. used to be okay in the 90s when we were kids. But I have, like special issue with things mm-hmm. like that because I feel like it's very derogatory and uh, yeah, I, we're in the 21st century yes, and I, I, that kind of I speak is not... I put that on the same level as in calling now what's uh, up? a black person an N-word or calling a female a B. Like, it's it's just as disrespectful. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it definitely, I use that... Um, also, when I feel like it's getting serious and I bring my child around the person, like seeing that interest in the person or, you know, even when talking on the phone, if mm-hmm, they ask mm-hmm. how my Super. child is doing, like, I feel like that's a big deal. I mean, not only as a, per, uh, of a, child, of a, a parent of a child with a special need, but also as a parent, you know, you want to know that if it gets to that level that you can rely on that person or that person's going to mm-hmm. have an interest to be around your child. Um, so, uh, I, us. I was gonna say, How, I, wait, I, I try wait, to, go. Um, go ahead. like I have, I have conversation and I keep my daughter in the back of my mind. 
for like the responses that I get. And it's not anything that I've ever had to do before. Um, before it was just, you know, just me. Uh, I wasn't looking like now I really, when I go, when I, when I was going on dates, it was really like, you know, is this, I, I don't have to look at it. I can't just look at it like, oh, is this somebody who I would like to date? And that's it. Now I really have to put in like, you know, is this person, you know, fit enough to be around my daughter? Is this person, um, um, I don't want to, I don't know, cool enough, has enough patience to be around my daughter? Because um, I hardly have patience and I had to, and I learned a lot of patience from being around my daughter. So if, if, I've, if I'm her father and I lose my head and I lose my cool sometimes, I really, if I have a partner who is not the mother, she really has to be more patient than me, I would say, because I'm the father and I lose my cool. Her mother loses her cool. You know, it's, it's very difficult um, mm-hmm. having, 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 I don't, I don't want to just say a child with autism, having my daughter, um, whenever we would go anywhere where there was a crowd, she's falling out and she's crying. Her mother would be very, very embarrassed. And me, I would just be like, all right, well, screw everybody. I don't care. My daughter's crying. So what? Um, I hate it when people come and give you parenting advice, not knowing she's autistic. Um, I also hate when people say, oh, but she doesn't look it. And I don't know what, uh, I don't know that like autism has an A, like people have an A on their forehead. I don't know what an autism look is. Um, because are they mixing this with Down syndrome or, or like, what are you exactly saying? What is an autism look? And I, before I used to get very defensive and like, you know, almost like, um, I don't want to say have an altercation, but argue back and forth. And now it's just like, I understand they just don't really know any better. And um, some people don't know any better. And some people say it, um, I guess I want to say it with like a bad intention, but either way, it rubs me the wrong way every time I hear, oh, she doesn't look it. And it's like, I don't know, it's just weird. It's it's mm-hmm. kind of like when, um, I don't know, you're Dominican too, right? But um, like when they're like, oh, you don't look Dominican. Yes, exactly. Like, what am and I supposed me, to look like a black? English, it's like, oh, yeah, you're black or you're half black. It's like, no, I grew up in the USA and I'm Dominican. I'm sorry. So, like, <laughs> the whole thing, I feel like there's a lot of ignorance regarding autism. Like, and I've gotten that too. Like, oh, he doesn't look autistic. I was like, what? Well, what does a person with autism look like? Mm-hmm. It's a spectrum disorder, one. There's people that are like, you know, um, and the DSM-5, which is the um, where they describe different disabilities and um, mental uh, health issues, they describe it as an autism spectrum disorder. A mm-hmm. spectrum is like, you know, a rainbow, right? There's different levels and different tiers, and not everybody that has autism has the same symptoms the, or yes, uh, challenges, right? So my son, I would consider mm-hmm. him like in the middle. In the middle, um, There's some kids that have Asperger's, which is not a classification anymore. But you know, a child with Asperger's or a person with Asperger's is higher functioning, socially awkward, you know, and there's also children on the complete opposite mm-hmm. end of the spectrum that they're nonverbal, even though they understand you know, they need a, a communication device to communicate their, their needs. So when people say things like that, it just it kind of makes me question, like, yeah, you know, yeah. do you think that's okay to say something to somebody? Um, also, the parenting advice. Uh, I was dating somebody that, <laughs> bless his heart, he he tried. Uh, tried. And Aiden wasn't really, Yeah, no. I, I, I talked about it on another podcast, but... Uh, Aiden basically, like he was trying to like correct yeah, yeah. Aiden. Like th- that's another thing. If you're dating somebody and they have children, regardless if you're in that person's life, leave the parenting to them, unless that person specifically asks you to address something. Because the way you communicate with that child might not be the way that the child receives the messages. So yeah. it might rub the kid the wrong way. So this guy, we were on a date. Um, we were hanging out afterwards. And, um, this was like later on, like after we had been dating for a few months and, um, 
my son was around and um basically Aiden told that he told Aiden to go to his room and Aiden um took his phone and then just started in the air so then when I reprimanded Aiden that I was like hey that's not okay we don't do that he as he's walking away that he's going to the room he's like that's an ugly hat and then he looks back and he's like he wait who like said that's an ugly hat yeah you my like son said that to the guy tell me what to do you lucky that's the only thing he said <laughs> <laughs> so so definitely when you're like i don't know that's something that i like let them know like hey let me handle the situations um later on if you feel comfortable we can have a discussion before you try to intervene because you know you have a specific relationship with your daughter i have a specific relationship with my son and somebody coming from the outside that's not a teacher or somebody who's working with him that has experience uh, working with people with special needs is not going to understand the behavior one they're not going to understand how to speak to the person and i feel like that's important but definitely i agree with you with everything you said i, I do have i uh, do have something i wanted what? to say that you almost left my mind that fast but, but i like having my daughter with autism it's a lot of like long term stuff that you have to deal with that 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 doesn't um necessarily click in all the time for instance um before when my when my daughter's mother was pregnant aisha when she was pregnant um she would always tell me about you know once we found out that it was a girl she would talk about like the bond that she wanted to have with her daughter and how she um like we would talk about the most silliest stuff you know when she gets in trouble at school we're not going to believe the teachers because the teachers lied on us like just dumb like you know dumb silly stuff we were we young and we're just like you know dreaming up stuff so um when my daughter is actually born and um you know the denial phase of the autism um again i was incarcerated when she was born so i was getting a lot of like secondhand uh forgot information but I was like looking stuff up. I looked like uh, autism up or whatever. And whenever I don't care if they would have said she had four legs, she's my daughter. Like, I don't. I don't care what uh, what happened, what disease, what what. None of that matters to me. She is my daughter, and I'm going to help her figure it out. So the first thing I did when I heard about it being in jail and and not having that much to do, I kind of got like fascinated with trying to figure out autism, like I could fix it or something. Um, and I kind of, and I went and I would talk to her mother and I would try to get little bits of information, but it's all, only so much stuff that you can cover. Um, and I, I noticed with my daughter, it's, it's rough because when she gets her period, um, you know how you figure that out? It's, you just walk in the room and you see a bunch of blood on the bed. There's like, she... She can say that she's hurting, but like the day, like the cramps and stuff get get very uh, bad, and she gets she's starting to get like uh, physical now, but hurting herself, biting, uh, head butting, slamming her safe on the floor, and it's it's scare it's scary, um, because it's something that I still have. This is just like this is just now starting to happen. She would do little things, but now like with her cramps, women regularly get. They always say, like, you know, when women are, are are going through that, that they get a little bit more irritated. So her that that she only says, you know, stomach hurt, and and that could mean anything. But when the when her period comes, she's she's starting to get very like um very aggressive, and we're trying to figure out how to deal with that the the right way. Okay, I I, I can't I can't even imagine like. Right now, Aiden's in pre-puberty, like stage five or something that the, the pediatrician was saying. But I'm, I'm seeing the changes in his behavior as well. So it's something that I don't feel mentally prepared to deal with. I'm going to look for resources and maybe speak to other parents of children that have autism that are you know older. But, yeah, it, it's... And going back to what you, the, the thing you said, like having like that mourning period for the future you thought your mm -hmm. child was going to have is yeah. really intense. Like I knew something was up. I had an idea that I've, it might have been autism. But when he finally got evaluated by the early intervention people, it was kind of like they hit you with mm -hmm. a ton of bricks. 
and I didn't want to yeah. cry in front of people. I'm getting teary eyed <laughs> right now, but I didn't want to cry. But like, I literally started crying. Like yeah. I was like, what, what do you mean? And it was just like, just like a roller coaster. So then like, you know, after the morning stage, you go through like mm -hmm. acceptance and what is life going to look like going forward? And you think about, you know, you have plans in your brain. Like they have a saying, you make plan and plans mm -hmm. and God laughs. So you have these plans. You're like, oh, I'm, you know, he's going to get married and he's going to own a house and he's going to do this career. Well, not the career necessarily, but it's going to be mm -hmm. successful and all these things. And, you know, that kind of goes out the window and you really just have to like sit and observe your child and see mm -hmm. what they're into and um, think about how their yep. brain works. Because I don't feel like, yes, autism is a disability for typically developing people as I make air quotes in the air, but they have a different way of seeing the world. Absolutely. Uh, it's so mm -hmm. special. And once you figure out your child's, like how their brain works and the things that make mm -hmm. them excited, it's, it's, it's like, it's like you're opening up like a box, like a treasure box and you're finding new things. I, I don't know if you went through that. No, with your I daughter. always, I always like my daughter. One thing I know about my daughter, if you want to make her happy or if you want to break her out of any funk, just talk about food a food list. Um, you can bring food, but actually just speaking about food, you have a friend to the end. I just hope that you can list every food, onion powder, garlic, anything that's in the supermarket, you can list and she will gladly, I realize she can spell better than me. I can't even spell zucchini. She can spell zucchini. She can spell all types of stuff. And I'm just looking at her like, who is the autistic one here? Like really? Because she does stuff and it's like, hold on, like, are you, like, she plays little games. When she was little, she used to hide stuff everywhere and then come back and find it. And I would be like, like, what is, like, what, what is going on here? She likes, she, she really, really loves food. Like, how women are, like, obsessed with purses and, like, clothes. She doesn't care about anything else but food and eats. She's my yes. type of girl. And she loves smelling. She smells everything like she has this like, yes yeah, yes yeah. like i'll lay in the bed she'll smell my feet then like run around and do a cartwheel then come back and smell my feet. and i'm like do my feet really smell that good or like i don't know what her her she just has like these little things and it's like yeah that's my daughter little yeah quirks. yeah that's kyla like that yep like so, sometimes that. me and her mother talk and i'm like yep yep i know exactly what you mean yes i know that's her <laughs> uh I have a question. How was how was she with affection when she was younger? When she was younger, I don't know because I used to always mother. Like when she first got diagnosed, was she always affection, or like did that kind of grow on her as she got? I older? think that has to be like because I was I wasn't there. I would I think if I answered that, I think I would be lying because I wasn't really there in in the like as far as I was being incarcerated. So the day to day of um, because I know as soon as I got her, I'm, I was all over her. I don't care if she was mad or not. So how how old was she when you when you were able to rejoin her? I think she was like three. I think she was three. Yeah. So how that's 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 significant. So how like how was she when you were affectionate with her? Did she respond and want to hug back or kind of like let you hug her and kind of like? Eh. No, she was with, with me definitely because I was the I was the like the fun parent. Um. So like she loves to go outside. She loves to go on swings, amusement parks. That's another, that's another thing for her. Like, um, so whenever her mother would, uh, leave out of the house to, to like, you know, her mother would hype her up. You're going to see daddy. You're going like to prepare her. And she would already mm -hmm. be happy because she's getting in the car and leaving. And as soon as she gets to daddy, it's like, like, it's almost like, shut up, dad. I'm gonna do what I want. You just follow me. And it, it, like she really she she takes advantage of me every chance she gets and it's kind of like i let her slide because i don't know um like what else what else to do not not i don't want to say not, not, what else to do it's not like she runs wild but it's like if she wants to turn left we're turning left if she wants to skip through a crowd we're skipping through a crowd um, whatever it is that she wants to do, I'm, I'm up for it as 
because when she'll she'll just start crying out of the blue or or, or like feel down and sometimes she does this thing where she like she like uh she does this like she does this sometimes and like her eyes go up to the corner and it looks up and i don't know if she's like having a memory or a flashback that's what i take it as that she's doing but like she does that every now and then and that's a quirk that her mother like really doesn't like but it's really anything it's really isn't anything she just does it though and she makes this like noise can, can i interject yes. so um just for the people that are listening those are called stimulatory behaviors so there's certain things that kids with autism do to help them settle themselves either calm themselves or like feel their bodies in a certain space and those can be hand gestures like what your daughter does uh my son does uh, a lot of scripting scripting so so scripting is that he'll repeat everything from a cartoon or a movie just to help himself deal mm -hmm. with whatever's going on mm -hmm. and he'll use it appropriately which is that's the that's the thing that like that I'm just like wow cuz he'll script something from a movie but it makes sense to whatever's going on in that moment mm -hmm. so i feel like that what Kyla's doing is a simulatory behavior and um it's kind of sometimes they like to spin objects sometimes they like to like bounce around they line do the up. hand flapping she lines up yeah line up toys, toys. Yes. yeah line up toys mm -hmm. or like do the hand flapping mm -hmm. it just helps them like settle themselves or or like if they're feeling like low energy it'll bring them up again it it all serves a different purpose but yeah, yeah a lot of kids with autism have um stim, stim they call it stims mm -hmm. stimulatory behaviors she ha she has three three things it's 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 food swings mm -hmm. roller coasters mm -hmm. Food swings, roller coasters, and I, I, I'm, I'm, I don't know what's the other. It's one. I feel like it's one more thing, but like those, those things. She doesn't really like. I don't think she really likes like covering her ears with like headphones and stuff like that. She's, mm -hmm. she's not really, she's not really in, into that. But she's a, she's a happy kid. She likes singing. She repeats a lot. Like she'll repeat. Yeah, if that's... I say, if I say Kyla go to school, she'll say Kyla go to school, and and. And now she's uh she'll flip it now also she started doing that now so she'll say Kyla go to school 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 go to Kyla but she'll she'll text that oh she'll okay. she'll, she'll text that like she'll she'll so, just repeat what you said but if yeah she'll she has a memory like she has they a have very great memory. memories yeah. they have very great memories so um that the repeating of things that you say or the things they hear like immediately after it's said or heard, it's called echolalic speech. Echolalic speech? Yeah. So gotcha. echolalic speech is basically you're repeating back what you hear. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes they do it to reaffirm what's going on. Mm -hmm. I did an episode before we recorded, and it's talking about uh, traveling with a child with special needs. And basically, I'll tell Aiden something, and he'll perseverate on it. That means he'll, like, really focus on it. And we'll be getting ready in the morning. Where are we going today? I'm like, mm -hmm. you know where we're going today. He's like, I'm going to school. I'm like, where are you? how are you going to get to school? I'm going to go on the bus. But before I got to that point, it was kind of like, Aiden, we're going to school. I've told you a hundred mm -hmm. times already. Every Monday we go to school. So, you know, I feel like it's not so much that he doesn't know what's going on. It's kind of like he's getting a confirmation or she's yeah. getting a confirmation. Yes. Um, yeah. yeah, our kids are... So she likes awesome, to line. Man. She likes to line stuff up too. She like I'll say first take a shower, then eat, then we go to swings, and she'll 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 confirm it also for me and and and, and play it back. Um, awesome. I was going to say like in the beginning to cope with her autism, because I was like, I don't want to say that I'm not, I'm not like I'm not a scholar. I've been I've done like a, a semester or so in college or whatever, but. At the time that um, that my when my daughter was younger, it was kind of like every, they were teaching her sign language, and of course, I'm so impatient that even though it's my daughter, I just came with my own sign language. So my own sign language, like I would see her and I would do like dumb things like salute her, and she would like salute me back. And her grandmother would be like, "Why don't you just learn? That's all that me and her know what, what's going on. We're fine." Like um, it was salute. 
stomach rubs. Um, she would just rub her um rub her stomach. Um, I did this when she was hungry, and she would do it also. Uh-huh. Um, like we had me and her had our own little sign language, which I'm sure probably hurt her learning the other sign language. But um, I learned some things like this, like her tapping her her. I think her, her right here means like she was hurt or something. Okay. Or like she had a hurt feeling. Um, it was a lot of different things I did to, to cope because I just felt like, well, if my daughter is special, I can have a special bond with her. Uh, who else, like who else, who else does it matter to that me and her communicate as long as communicate this way, as long as me and her have this bond. All right. I love that so much. So I want to have a couple of other questions. Um, so you mm. told me the things that she loves. So she's into roller coasters. She likes to cook and food Mm -hmm. and she Mm -hmm. enjoys swings but yes tell me more about your daughter who is she oh and trampolines the trampolines that was the other one she loved to jump it's actually a book called um by an autistic kid that's japanese and it's it's called i think it's either let me jump or i have to remember i have to get the book's name but he wrote the book with like his little like tablet like um and he's basically saying that a lot of autistic kids love to jump because it's the only time they feel free. Mm-hmm. Like they, uh, um, I don't know if all kids are autistic like to jump, but this is him. This was him explaining explaining himself. I'm gonna get the name of the book for you. Yeah, if you get the name of the book, I can drop it in the show notes for the listeners as well, and for me because I haven't read it yet, and I am. Yep. I love reading things like that. Uh, gotcha. So tell me more about Kyla. Like, who is she? What makes her sparkle? Food. <laughs> food makes her food makes her food makes her sparkle so much. And and really is really those things. It's really as simple as that. Like um when she's in a real big funk, I don't like to t- to promise her uh those things and not give it to her because it will be a problem. But when she's in a funk and I can move around, I'm gonna do whatever it is that she wants to do because she will not let up until she gets one of her demands. Okay. Um, and I, and why her mother might send her to a room, I'm such like a, 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 a Kyla's, a Kyla's dad that like it's five in the morning and I'm getting up to go to the swings because Kyla will scream and yell and fall out. And of course, wake me up if I'm asleep. Mm. So to not have like a, a, a WWE fight with my daughter. Oh my gosh. I get up, I get up and I do like what she wants because I know she's going to be persistent in what she wants, regardless if I'm tired or not. If, if anything, our kids are super persistent. Like they do not let up. Yes. No, there's no, there's no letting up. Uh, but she, um, she's a sweetheart though. I know. She seems so sweet. Uh, what else? So we were talking about your daughter getting her period and, you know, how you, how she lets you know, um, are there any fears or reservations for that you have for her as a, that she's going to be a woman with autism, um, you know, mm-hmm. like as she grows up? Like, I don't, I, I, like I said before, um, a lot of, all right, so the, the way I see the way I see Kyla and her mother is like I I give her mother like a lot of flowers not literally but like it's like she has she has two more she has two younger sons and she has my daughter she makes sure that my daughter gets like the best care that she can um but I know in this situation when my daughter turns 18 or older 20 I still I'm still going to see the little the little bit I don't I feel like she's going to get, I've seen her get laughed at in on, on, in the park and her not even realize that the kids are laughing so bad that I wanted to go and like, you know, go get your parents up and beat your parents up. Like, I, be, yeah, because it's like, she's not even hurting anybody. She's like, you know, she's spinning and she's making her little noises, but she's not really hurting anybody. She's just in her own little zone. And the kids that were making fun of her were even, were even younger than her. So like stuff like that, I know the the world is very very cruel. Besides racism, besides all type, uh, besides there's all types of stuff. And then, so like, uh, 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 you're, 
those type of things um, can hurt somebody like me or somebody like you that are who who think we we perfectly know everything is fine in the world, but we can go outside and get into 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 trouble and run in, run into trouble. So me, I'm very like I'm I don't know that I'm gonna let my baby go. I don't know that she's ever gonna be, even if she was way more higher functioning. I, that that when I'm around her, first of all, I don't want her to get hurt because of her mother. I don't want her to send her back to her mother, uh, hurt whether she was if she was autistic or not. So being that she is autistic, it's like I have a real like, a even more like like I have to protect my baby. I have to because I don't think I don't want to say. I, I I just say I don't think she knows any better. It, it, plain and simple, that's the best way. To, I don't care if anybody gets offended. It's my daughter. You. You deal with your you deal with your kids the way you want to deal with them. I'm gonna deal with my baby the way I want to deal with mine. And I feel as though I want to get I want her to I don't know if move in with me or something. I don't know. I don't I don't I don't want to let my baby go. The world is way too cruel and way too messed up to let her um for me to let her step out. Yeah. Um. So my plan for Aiden when he's older, uh, I'm planning on getting a mother daughter house, but this time it's gonna be mother son, mm-hmm. and um. I want to give him a space so he can be an individual, you know, but I still want to be there for him. Exactly. Uh, I, I don't mind. Like he, he's very independent though. I, I don't know if I've told you, but I actually send them away to camp um, in the summer, for like a week at a time. Um, he has a really good time. Mm-hmm. He gets to be around other kids. He's supervised um, the entire time by, by adults. He's not by himself just doing his own thing. And, um, he really enjoys that. Like when I put him on the line to go to camp, I get more heartbroken. I'm like, my baby's leaving. And he's like, bye mom, <laughs> yeah. see you next week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, so, you know, I, I know that he can do it on his own. It's just, do I feel mm-hmm. comfortable letting go? Um, and I feel like as parents, like, yes, we need to learn that, but also there's nothing wrong with taking care of our babies. Absolutely. Um, what else? So yeah, definitely having a mother, mother son house is the plan you know for the future. You, you know what's funny when I get like when when I stop when I stop like um, it's kind of so funny like when we start making a list of foods and I like run out because I'll go I'll say like you know I'll say I'll think in my head seafood and then I'll run down every seafood that I know, then I'll think like seasonings and I run down every season I know fruits vegetables all the way when I run out. And I'm, and I'm tired of repeating and I'll start saying stuff like, um, what's next? Um, beans. Do you know anything, Kyla? And then we'll, we'll, whenever I start, whenever I get stuck, she'll do it. She'll go, um, and I'm, and I'll laugh like Kyla, stop repeating me. And she'll just look at me like, I don't care. Right. What's next? Like what, what, what's next in the same exact way. And I'm like, this little girl is so funny, man. So like, she surprises me all the time with this with the stuff that it. she does. Oh, uh, what is it? Aiden had we had a little game when he was younger. I think it was like kindergarten or first grade. He would ask me. We would start singing Old McDonald, and then I would pause. Mm-hmm. Old McDonald had a, and then Aiden would tell me an animal, and of course he picks animals that don't really make a noise or not common animals. So I'm like, oh, well. McDonald had a farm. And he's like, a peacock. I'm like, what do I do? I'm, like, I'm, I'm like, I'll like, <laughs> just make up a sound. But he, he, he's really, he's okay. So I used to read him books and, you know, because I am a teacher, I do all the voices and, and he has the mm-hmm. same ability. He can reproduce sounds and voices exactly how he hears them. So I'm big into Harry Potter and um, he watched Harry Potter with me a bunch of times. And at one point we were just hanging out and he's like, mommy, I want to watch Harry Potter. I was like, you want to watch Harry Potter? He's like, yeah, mom. And I'm like, okay. He's like, I want to hear when he says, Harry, Harry, you're a wizard. And he said it with a British accent. (laughs) And I'm like, who are you? Are you? (laughs) Where you get that from? Yeah, yeah. That and watching him. I don't know if um, if Kyla ever got to watch um, Peppa Pig. Kyla, Kyla loves Sesame Street so, and Barney. 
I think more, it's more Sesame Street. Uh, yeah, so Aiden was heavy into Peppa Pig, and it's like a British pig, and they speak, you know, with a British mm. accent. And to this day, he still says zebra instead of zebra. <laughs> Kyla, Kyla likes going and, and watching stuff on YouTube in German language and Spanish, and she's so like before she would she would watch YouTube and certain like. I would notice that it was certain episodes and she would start crying. And then I see like in Sesame Street, like the what like was supposed to be like the big bag wolf or wherever was coming in. And she was already like crying because the wolf was coming. She would fast forward it. This is how I realized like it was the episode of Sesame Street. It's certain episodes where like and you know, not too nothing too crazy happens on Sesame Street where somebody like but it's like um and I think it was a wolf or a bat or something that came on, and she was like, she couldn't, she couldn't handle it. Like, ten seconds before he came on, she was already crying. Like, no, like, like wolf bat. And she'll say like, a uh, wolf is bad, wolf bad. And I look, and I'm like, oh my god, this girl is like, ten seconds ahead already crying. Yeah. She knows the there episode. was a lot of episodes that Eddie used to watch uh, when he was born. I think Kyla's from the same era, um, Nick Jr. It was called Noggin before, mm -mm, and they mm -mm. had, they had uh, yeah. Dora, they had Peppa Pig, no, not Papa, they had um, Olivia, they had Yo Gabba Gabba, and the Fresh Beat Band. Oh, Yo and Gabba Gabba. He was heavy that into Nihau Kaila, like, obsessed. So, mm. yeah. I think, was there... Was there a character on Yo Gabba Gabba called Fuchi Lu? Um, not Fuchi Lu, it's somebody else. I think, I, I know what I you're think. saying. Um, remember, it's it's all it's like these yeah, big people. There's was, people in costumes, and there's one that's like stripy. His name's Broby. Um, there's a DJ Lance, which is the guy with the he looks like Spike Lee, but he has like orange top hat with like furry clothes. It's 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 weird. But there was a couple of episodes when yeah, yeah. one of them would get hurt, and then Aiden was little, and he would cry. He would cry like somebody, like he was hurt. And I would like, I would, I would get so like, yeah, yeah. scared. I'm like, what's going on? So then, like you said, looking at those episodes and kind of like hearing what he was scripting too, because he would script from Kailan, because I think the tiger, I forgot his name, got hurt also. So he would like script during that part of Yo Gabba Gabba, what happened in Nihau Kailan. So he's understanding what's happening in the situation. But for me to understand, like for me to find out, it took like investigative skills. So that's that's another thing I want to say about us parents with, of children with autism. We're just like, we're like gonna get to the bottom of it, regardless. Uh, yeah, our kids Absolutely. are. It's crazy. I, so okay, can I ask you something? So I know you're dating. Yes. And um, has mm -hmm. have you thought about having more children? Yes, I have. But um, I don't just want to be anybody's baby daddy. I want to be with somebody. Like, if I'm going to have, if I'm going to have uh, another child, I want to be with that person. Like, I, like, I just want to be, I want to, I, it has to be not like a, oh, it was an accident or it was like, I want, like, I want something planned. I want something like, you know, let's grow together. Let's build together. Because I, I, one thing I know is that it's just is me even me growing up. I did, I had a father and I didn't have a father. He would come around on the on the weekends, like of course because they divorced or whatever. But I don't care. I don't have my mother and my dad in the same household. That's all I really would would have liked. I think um, you have a better balance that way. So I would want something like that for my from for my kids. Um. When I first, I don't know, I kind of got traumatized when Aiden got diagnosed at first because I, I, you know, the internet, I started reading all these articles and there was one or a few actually that it said like the propensity of you having a ch another child with autism the second time around is high. Everybody's like, no, that's not going to happen, you know it's not going to be with the same parents. So, you know, the genes are not, might not be there, et cetera. But I got really scared. And at this point right now, I'm just like, you know, 38. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I don't think it's going to happen. 
let me let me let me ask you this question, right? So, um, at first, at first, it was almost I want to say it was almost like a blame game at first. Like, oh, is it your side of the family, or is it like, uh, and this is like BS that's way old now. But like, to me, it was just it was just that you know we were both scared and we didn't know like what to do. We 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 were coming up with all types of stuff. You're like, you know, was it because I was doing, uh, because I was smoking at the time? Like, there was all types of reasons. And even now, some, I want to say some ignorant people in my family. Um, my my daughter, when she was a baby, when she was, I can't even remember, man. She might have been eight months or something like that. Um, her mother was late to um, a doctor's appointment. And she was giving her a bath in in the sink. And she cut the cold water off by mistake first. And so, like, my baby got burned, like, her wrist, her stomach, like, you know, um, mm-hmm. to the point where it was pink, like, pink. Um, and to this day, my father still thinks that's how my daughter became autistic. And I'm like, bro, you have to, like, you got to pick up a book. Like, it's it's not, you know, it's not, it's not a situation where the child was dropping. This, this is, like, I'm sure there's a name for that. This is not the name for that. And, um, I get so frustrated trying to explain it to like, um, I don't want to say airheads, but people who are ignorant to what autism is because they just take it and run with it and say what they want to say. And and I get offended fast. So I just leave it alone and let them, it's let, let somebody else explain it to you because I'm going to explain it with hands and feet. So I'm gonna go this way, and you can go that way, like. It, it, but it, it's 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 difficult. It's, it's difficult. It's more difficult dealing with the um, the public perception of what your child is than actually um, dealing with my child. Should I say? Yeah, that was just the thing. Is like us as parents, we're quick on the uptake. We're like reading the articles and doing this and researching here and looking for resources and doing all that. Which another thing is like, which we need to address as a community. There's not that many places that you can point a parent to, to receive resources or to get orientation, not orientation about, Hey, this is autism, but orientation in the sense like, Hey, this is what you can do for your child. And if you do it early enough on in the long run, it'll be better for their quality of life. Okay. So besides that for the parent, mm-hmm. like family's not necessarily always understanding of your child's disability. You know, it takes a lot of, you know, schooling and a lot of people don't want to read or they don't care to read. Um, so that was a whole, and even if they say they understand, like the judgment is still there when your child doesn't behave as a typically developing yeah. child or quote unquote mm. normal, which nobody's really normal, um, then they're looked on like, oh, what's no, wrong with your kid? Not. Uh so, you know, we have to be mm-hmm. advocates for our children and be their mouthpiece because a lot of the time they can't, you know, defend themselves. But it's harder when you have family that is not really yeah. on board or understanding of your child's condition. It just makes things it just makes things that much worse. Like you're you're the adult, adult up or something. I don't I don't know. I don't even know how to say how to how to say it. Like, I'm, I was just thinking. My daughter, my me and my daughter have have a bond that only me and my daughter understand, it, and I'm fine with it. And 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 her her I know that my daughter does more like she has a routine at home. So when she's with me, it's a little bit more freestyle. So she does a little bit. So she gets a little bit more extra. And I'm not really like, I'm stern with her, but it's like when I look at her or or if I try to like, yeah, I end up feeling bad. We don't have a lot of time left, but I want you to talk about Kyla's book. Oh, yes. Kyla is an author also. Kyla, um, she... She makes we her 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 grandmother is a, a a baker, so Kyla sometimes used to help or mess up her grandmother stuff, um, and her her grandmother got together and they made a list um of stuff that they wanted to bake to make a book for, 
And now they oh. have uh, Cooking with Someone Special, which is uh, by Desiree, her grandmother, and Kyla. Those are the, okay. the, the two authors. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop the book. the book link in the show notes, and I'm going to buy a copy because I would love to have that in my library. Um, give us. I feel like we covered all the topics. Uh, thank you so much, Kevin. Good. I want to, if you get any like questions or, or, or come back yeah. to the show, I will be back if I need to answer anything, but please keep in mind that you're not getting any, like, um, you're not going to get any, uh, book answers from me. You're going to get real, like, uh, the real, the real, the stuff that people like, that you, the stuff that's under your finger now, that's what you're going to get from me. The real, not, not the clean stuff. No. Cause the clean stuff doesn't, it doesn't help. It no, doesn't help not. us. It doesn't help so, me. Uh, thank you everyone for listening and joining my compadre and I for this episode. Uh, follow me at Comadreando pod on Instagram and follow Kevin. Do you want to drop your handle? Uh, you can follow me at Sincere Souls. And like Kevin said, if Instagram. you have any questions whatsoever, uh, please feel free to send me a DM or an email at comadreando at esctheNetwork.com. Um, and thank you for spending time entre compadres and comadres today. Thank you. I will. I hope great. you will be back. I okay, have so we can discuss that. Like All to right, everyone. That. Thank you so much. Have a great day. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. Don't hang up. What? I won't.